Welcome to the ESCMED study group for Clostridioides difficile, or C. diff for short. Well, we're a multidisciplinary group, doctors, scientists, nurses, pharmacists, epidemiologists, among others. And what we all have in common is our interest in this important pathogen. So our study group has four main aims. And the first is to raise awareness, because while another pathogen beginning with C has been in the news in the last year, C. diff hasn't gone away. It's still causing a problem for our patients, our healthcare service and for society. Our second aim is to provide a platform for education, discussion and dissemination of all things C. diff. Thirdly, many of our study group members are involved in the production of evidence-based guidelines for the surveillance, diagnosis, prevention and management of C. diff. So for example, the updated treatment guidelines will be presented at this ECMAT conference. And lastly, we foster collaboration between our members. Hi, I'm Kerry Davies, a clinical scientist in the UK and the education officer for the European study group for CDEF. My main interest is the diagnosis of CDEF. Why? Because it's complicated. Do you look for the bug, its toxins or its DNA? And if you find CDEF in someone who has no symptoms, what does that mean? ESCMID guidelines from the study group can help to elucidate some of these issues, highlighting that toxin correlates with disease, but that low sensitivity of some of these toxin assays means you need to use them in an algorithm with other tests. The study group has supported many European-wide studies, such as um, COMBAC CDI, looking at um, C. diff diagnostics across Europe. The group were able to highlight the disparity between community and hospital diagnosis of C. diff, as it's not just about which tests to use, but who to test. Almost 50% of cases in the community never received a test, compared to only 4% in hospitals. So for your patients with diarrhoea, think who do I test and how do I test them? Think C. diff. Molecular typing of bacterial strains is an important part of infection prevention and control. For Clostridioides difficile, capillary electrophoresis ribotyping is currently recommended method. When common ribotype is identified among CDI cases with strong epidemiological link, these isolates should be investigated further with more discriminatory methods such as wall genome sequencing. Good morning everyone, my name is Benoit Guéry. I am a scientific officer in the city group of the ECMID and I would like to talk to you about the future guidelines that can be released for C. diff uh, treatment. Actually, three major changes for this recommendation was first, uh, no more metronidazole, but that we knew already, and two additional things about the respective places of, on one side, bacillotoxumab and FMT. So I think you should look forward to see this guideline, and uh, I wish you a very good day and a very nice segment. Hi, I'm Elena Regadas, a clinical microbiologist from Spain and member of the executive committee of the European Study Group for Clostridioides Difficile Infection. One of my main interests is fecal microbiota transplantation, which is an innovative procedure that consists in transferring intestinal microbiota from a healthy donor into another individual. It has shown to be very effective for recurrent Clostridioides Difficile Infection. There are multiple routes of administration via colonoscopy, nasenteric tube, and more recently, capsules. It all starts with an intensive donor screening. Donor screening programs should follow international recommendations and comply with local regulations. FMT should be implemented by an experienced multidisciplinary team after a thorough risk assessment for each candidate. So check out the ESCMED website, check out our study group section on it, and it'll give you a flavour of what we do. We've got some recent newsletters, you'll see our guidelines, you'll see publications, and you'll see an overview of our mission and names. And if you like what you see, come join us. I look forward to welcoming you at our upcoming webinar, and hopefully we will meet in person in the near future. Thank you.